you're going to have a fantastic afternoon uh, of some, uh, some great music. I've heard the sound checks and uh, it's wonderful. Uh, the only one I haven't heard is the first one up. Um, well, the, the, it wasn't my idea to book him, to be honest with you. <laughs> but he's insisted on being here today, so would you please give a great big round of applause to Ian K. Brown. Thank you very much. <laughs> The trouble with following Billy, he's so short, isn't he? <laughs> right. Oh, is that a noise? Is that me? Yeah. You're on my phone. Switch your mobiles off. There's no signal anyway. Right. I was going to start with a, a song, but I'm going to start with another one. Do you want to switch my phone off? <laughs> <laughs> And I'm just looking around, there are no children in the audience, so I'm going to start with something. This is a traditional... Oh, could you, Gary, just at the appropriate moment, you have to put the fingers over his ears, OK? Uh, this is a... in the sort of folk idiom, it's all about unrequited love and gardening. Some of you might have heard it. This is a song, this is my greatest hit. It went viral around Holt Whistle in Northumberland in a, a nicer way than most other things go viral. Um, and it's about the thing that really has upset me most in recent years, my hedge, and what people do to it. It never goes right, but it doesn't matter. Some primeval calling, filling our hands with salt. Gardening is a British right, we will defend it, even fight anyone who has a go and spoils our horticultural show. My privet hedge out front is my special pride and joy. I've cut it in all kinds of shapes for people to enjoy. I've cut it like a castle and a monster with big eyes I've even cut a smile on it so it comes as no surprise When I find it full of holes at weekends in the mornings Made by drunks who can't stand up, in fact they keep on falling Aided by some alcohol, a privet isn't like a wall They lean against it and they fall if only I could catch them, you know just what I'd do. Just the other night, when to sleep I could not go, I heard some quiet voices underneath my bedroom window. It went on for a while, so I got up out of bed. I wasn't sure who was doing what to who, but they were doing it in my hedge. Another bloody great big hole Consuming passion was out of control But how would you feel if it was you And the owner of the hedge interrupted you And now that I had caught them I didn't know quite what to do You see it's not where I would choose A bit more comfort with better views I'd sooner do it with the shampoo girl Who showers herself in a waterfall Or a tropical beach with coconut trees Breaking waves lapping to my knees Not too high up so as to chill the parts that are designed to thrill but in my mind this thought is nagging is it my libido lagging when i'm not turned on by the thought of shagging in someone's garden privet hedge or i could think of to say please get out of my hedge and be on your way a hasty withdrawal and some sorry said to me and to her and then a slow stagger off So what can I think to do to keep my hedge alive? Plant hawthorn in the gaping holes, filling the space just to survive. Maybe it's because I'm jealous of their youth and nature's laws when I'm more worried about my privet hedge since the onset of the menopause. Or 
maybe I'm perverse and seek to spoil other people's passion by making my hedge off limits to try to stop this sexual passion. But the next time the sap rises and satisfaction must be quick, I'll wait for the cry when they're in my hedge. I think I can be a little Thank you.